Hey guys, it's Grim Dark Tycoon. Welcome back to another Theme Park Tycoon 2 Roblox video. And today in this video, I'm going to be going over the new things in the new Theme Park Tycoon 2 update, mainly the wooden coasters you can see I have right here, and block breaks, which I show off in this little vertical launch coaster I created. Uh, there are other things in this update, but these are the two main features. So I think I'm going to go and look at the change log. All right, so here we're looking at the change log. Uh, if you can see, this update's pretty big, or at least there's a lot of little things that they added. There uh, are only a couple big things, but they added the new support system, or rather, changed the new support system to be completely enabled for everyone instead of having to use the enable new supports command. Um, as you can see, it's using these new supports, uh, and there is no way to use the old supports, which kind of sucked. So I'm glad that they have completely added the new supports. All right, now we're back in the change log. They also added the new roller coaster, the wooden coaster, which you've already seen, uh, but I will show that off more in all the features of it. They added four image panels and one flag, four new primitives. Uh, these next two things just talk about block breaks, which I will go over later, chain lift support, creating block sections at the end of the lifts, uh, and you can enable or disable supports for each track piece. For example, if you want to have custom supports, you could completely turn off the automatically generated supports for an, for a ride. Uh, and you can generate supports on top of paths if you want to do that for whatever reason. For example, if you have paths that go over under a coaster but you want it to look realistic, you can now put the paths uh, put the supports on the paths. Trains will now avoid stopping at stations if they don't need to. If there's no entrance or exit and if the next block section is free, you can still enable the old behavior where they stop at each station. Uh, there was uh, Im improved support generation for inverted tracks. If the track goes upside down, the supports will generate better. And uh, optimized support generation. The transport train now has a brown default support color, so I guess that's cool. They increased the maximum spline length, which... I don't know this for sure, but my guess is that it has something to do with the advanced editor. You can make the pieces longer. They did some UI adjustments, internal changes, and fixed various minor issues. Anyway, now we're getting into the wooden coaster. So as you can see, it's a neat coaster with these new uh, supports. I did actually delete a couple of the supports just to see how it worked to delete them. Uh, but the supports are, do look pretty nice uh, and are really good wooden supports. Um, speaking of wooden supports, I had to go and build all these out of the frames for my fake wooden coaster that I made of you that I made using a vertical launch coaster, and I just finished that yesterday. Now this updates out, which is cool, but it also it's it's they're 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 bullying me. Everyone hates me. No, uh, no, I'm 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 being sarcastic. Obviously, they don't hate me. They didn't know that I was building a wooden coaster, and they don't care. So it's completely understandable. Anyway, so for some information about this coaster, uh, you can see it's a wooden coaster. It's in the roller coasters tab, obviously. It costs three thousand two hundred and fifty to place down. It has a two block wide track, and you can get it from getting the what's it called the a worthy park achievement, which also unlocks the hyper coaster. So now you will actually be there are a few more rewards for getting your park value to 200,000, which you can do by placing more rides in your park and having the total park value go up to that number. You can see park value in this menu. This is just the value of all the things in your park. So if you place down 200,000 worth of items, it should get it. Although I'm not completely sure if that's exactly how it works, but I think that's pretty close. Anyway, uh, the trains are slightly less than one block long, so one station will hold one, two stations will hold two, but three stations can hold up to four, four stations can hold five, and five stations can hold the maximum of seven, as you can see here, except there appear to be some issues with it loading in. Uh, so there are also a couple issues with uh, loading because these two seats are inside each other, 
which although it looks cool is not how it's supposed to be rendered. Uh, now I'm going to get into building one of these just to show off all the pieces of it. As you can see it can obviously have stations, it can have brakes, it can support gentle and steep slopes but it cannot support vertical slopes. Obviously has chain lifts, that's pretty important too. It can do all of the uh, turns. Um, and if we go back down to flat, you can see that we'll also do these turns. When in this, it can go steep down, whatever the heck you want. Um, and note here, I'm not actually trying to make a good coaster. This is a horrible coaster. I'm just showing off all the pieces it can use. So don't yell at me down in the comments for making a bad coaster. Um, I've it cannot go straight down, nor nor can it go straight up. And the maximum banking that this coaster will allow is 80. It will not go beyond 80, and it cannot invert. As you can see in the More Pieces tab, there are block breaks, which are now for every single coaster. Chicanes, uh, pretty typical. It's got uh, long chicanes, flat to steep slopes, which may actually be very helpful with this coaster because it does use the it does use a shorter um uh what's it called steep to flat uh, on the default uh s shorter than other coasters i believe it could just be the way the track looks i'm being dumb but it does look smaller than other coasters it also has the long straight pieces flat to slope turns uh flat sloped wide turns. Most of the typical pieces, it has spirals wide and wide spirals. It does not have loops, half loops, or corkscrews because, as I've already said, this coaster cannot invert. Therefore, it cannot use pieces such as those because those require the track to invert. I'm just going to finish off the um, coaster right there. And I'm not going to bother writing it because this is obviously not going to work for writing. But you can see how the support generation is actually really nice. How it can avoid other tracks in certain areas. And it can also go through the supports here. It, can, uh, there, it does generate supports above the track. But I believe it, the way it looks is that it only does that for its own track. But... I don't know. I haven't played around with this enough. And I think that's all the information there is for the wooden coaster. There might be more that I forgot. If there is, yell at me in the comments and I will make a pinned comment about that. But if there isn't, well, we're moving on to block breaks. So the block breaks are a new feature uh, that have been added. They are a piece in the more pieces section, as you saw earlier, with the wooden coaster which I didn't actually use building the wooden coaster because it doesn't freaking matter. They, they These are block brakes. It looks very similar to normal brakes, um, if not the same. They act similarly to brakes, except they can stop the coaster if there is a um, if there is a train already in the next block. So stations can divide up blocks. So can chain lifts if you enable the setting, which is now in the menu. Treat chain lift endings as a block break. You can also change the station behavior that I mentioned earlier. And in operations, there is a new block breaks power, so you could make it so block breaks do nothing, or you could make them really sharp breaking, which can actually be really helpful if you want the block breaks to not actually b break your train when it's going through. Although you will have to make sure that the train can still get through the remainder of the track from being at a complete stop. Now as you'll see if I click the ride the trains will slowly make it to the next block. Uh, I think they'll make it to the... Uh, well... They will make it to a block and then they'll stop. As you can see this train stopped at this block, this train stops at this block. Um, it will also spawn a train up on the top of the chain lift if it needs to. 
uh, when you build the coaster or if that's where the, all the block bricks are. When you put it into testing mode or open it up, as you can see, this starts out going, all the trains start out on going, and once this gets to the top here, you may see, all right, this train has to stop at this block, but this train also stopped at these block at this block here because the next block, the station, wasn't opened up, and this one, the next block being the chain lift, wasn't opened up. That's basically how block breaks work in real life, and I'm so glad that they finally got at it because now you don't have to have a station and a complete stop to have block breaks in the middle of your track, which is incredibly helpful for creating realistic coasters or just coasters with multiple cars going around because you can see I like having multiple trains, multiple cars. I need to be... <laughs> more specific, cars being the individual piece and trains being the whole thing, I think. But what I've had to do, since I don't just want to put a station, a big fat station up at the top of the hill, that wouldn't look very good. Um, I just put extra stations back at the end to have um, to have one train loading and another train running. But block breaks will make it a lot easier to have multiple trains running at the same time, as you can see here. Another thing about block breaks and block sections is the number of trains running will be one less than the number of block sections, unless there is a, only one block section. Because if you think, if you look at it this way, so pretend there's a car over on this station. There's also one up at the top of the lift. There's also one here and here. This one at the station will try to move because there's one, because it want to, it needs to move, but it can't because there's this train up at the top of the lift. The one at the top of the lift can't move because there's one at this station, and if it went, this block may be free, but the next block station wouldn't, and it would run into the train and could cause a crash if this one doesn't move. This one tries to move, but it can't move because this up here has a train on it, and this one tries to move, but it can't because there's one back at the station, which is why you always have to have one block break free for the uh, next car to move on. Now, I'm pretty sure I've covered everything, all the main things about this update. I'm just going to go back, look at the change log real quick to look at any block break things I've, I've um, missed. Trains can roll off, roll over blocks, Block breaks without stopping if the next block section is free or stop and wait. Uh, and those c that can be controlled with the operations. Block breaks cannot intersect with stations or other block breaks if you have disabled collisions. Similarly to how stations cannot intersect with each other if you have disabled collisions. And chain lifts support creating block sections at the end of each lift. And that has to be enabled in ride settings, as I've said. It isn't by default enabled. I just enabled it for this ride to show that off. And chain lifts can only form a block section if the end does not intersect with a station block break or other chain lift. And I'm pretty sure that's all the important things. I am going to actually look at the new image panels, since I am curious. Oh, it appears to be standing image panels that stand in the middle of the... Those are actually pretty neat and could be helpful in several circumstances, but aren't really helpful for me right now. Anyway, that's all I've got for this video. If there's anything I missed, feel free to leave it in the comments. And if you liked the video, leave a like. Maybe other people could see it. Maybe it could help out some other people. And if you want to see my other content, I make videos on every single one of these updates. Well, I shouldn't say that. I can't guarantee it. But I, may, I will try to make videos on every one of these updates and other general Roblox, Minecraft, and I don't know, other games content. I don't know what I do. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.